Hey, how's it going? I'm glad you clicked on this video. Uh, you might not watch this whole thing, understood, but I just wanted to take this next few moments as an opportunity just to share my thoughts well, as it comes to the current status of our nation and of the political climate that we're in. So my name is Nathan Montgomery. Uh, I am a Christian. I believe in the 66th book canon uh, that we have a Savior that is real. We have a Father who is real. We have a Holy Spirit that is real. And that is engaged with us as individuals, and he's engaged in our culture. And yes, he is engaged in this political system. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about how we as Christians should biblically respond to the pol political climate that, that we're facing. I believe that there is a response we should make. There's a lot of times I feel that people uh, go to church on Sundays uh, and, and do not want to bring up uh, politics at all because that, that creates division. Politics creates division. We have different ideas and thoughts on it. And so throughout the week, maybe, we might be a little bit more inclined to share our political thoughts. Some people want to stay out of it altogether. Some say, oh, it, you know, at least we should vote. And I think voting is really important, but I, I don't think that that is justifiable as the, uh, you know, as the political actions we should take. I think there's a lot more we can do as a Christian when it comes to politics. We know, according to scripture, that there are objective truths. Like we know that life begins in the womb. It's a life that, that the Lord has woven together, that he's formed and fashioned in his image within the womb. So we know that abortion is a sin and it's not allowed. That's a biblical truth that we should follow through when it comes to politics. There's other things that are more up for grabs uh, that that is not necessarily directly uh, stated in scripture, uh, but there are a lot of truths that we can, you know, that we can understand from it. And I'm not going to go down that whole list today. But I, I believe as a Christian, we have to be involved. We have to defend morality. We have to defend the truth of God's word and who he is in his character, because we see God's character diminished in schools. We see his character diminished in our government. And that's something that we cannot see done. You know, we hear the same separation of church and state. And that as well has been misconstrued because we as individuals, uh, as a church even, uh, you know, can still defend uh, different policies within a state. If, if we don't, we're basically separating our lives uh, and trying to make, you know, our lives, split our lives in half and make it two lives. But that's just not the case. Politics is part of us as part of the body of Christ. And the reason that these letters were written by Thomas Jefferson to the church where this whole saying got started was to tell the church and to comfort them to say that, that the government does not have a right to intrude on the freedom of religion. So that, that is just a comforting thing to know that we have an opportunity as a church to be involved in politics and to know that we are protected with our freedom of religion, to know that the government does not have a say on our religious views and our religious freedom. Uh, you know, the biggest thing we as Christians understand from Scripture is that we're called to walk in love. We're supposed to love God with all of our hearts, and we're called to love our neighbors as ourselves. And that's something that stays true when it comes to our response to politics. You know, I've done it so many times myself, but I've seen it everywhere where people who claim to follow Christ, people who even do follow Christ, will come and make a political statement. They'll they'll make a slander. They'll make a disrespectful, hateful, uh, you know, statement against something outside of love. And that's not what we're called to do as Christians. We're called to respond in love. But that doesn't mean that we can't hate the evil we see in our world. That doesn't mean that we can't criticize uh, people who support abortion. We can't criticize people who support murder and people that, that give room uh, for terrorism and that people that uh, want to take God out of our schools. We can criticize those specific situations, but that does not give us the right to disrespect the individuals that hold those views. And uh, it's just a beautiful thing we have. That, you know, Jesus says, give to Caesar what is Caesar's. And I, I think Jesus, we don't, we don't see as much in Scripture how involved he was with the government. But we know that Jesus existed in it, and he didn't uh, attempt to create 
uh, a rebellion to take over the government. Jesus didn't want an anarchy. He wanted us to be in our government, but to but to still hold true to our Christian values. And thankfully, we live in a nation that was founded on Christian values and principles, and that we are defended. Uh, you know, our religions are defended. We see on the currency. You know, it's in God we trust. And uh, there's imperfections. There's mistakes. Uh, there's things that in our history from our government that uh, has hurt the heart of God, uh, like slavery. That's that's potentially the biggest thing our nation has done to hurt the heart of God. Um, and now we have abortion. Uh, but I believe that that we as individuals can respond to politics in a loving manner, and we can defend the truths of Scripture. And the other things that are kind of up for grabs, uh, maybe a response to government as it comes to uh, our economy, I think there's still truths in that, but I think that's something we can discuss. But in everything, we have to talk out of love, and we have to talk out of what Scripture says and the principles that come from that. Because if we start going off our own thoughts, and we start going off what we think is right, <laughs> we know that we're finite, imperfect beings that do not have the ideal form of government in our minds. We need to lean on to a Savior to know how our government should be upheld. So that's that's all I have for now, just kind of an intro. Uh, I kind of hope to talk more about this because I'm passionate about this, and I believe that we're blessed to be in America, uh, but we have to pray. We have to pray for our local authorities, our state authorities, our, our federal authorities, and, and pray for President Trump uh, in this hour because we know he needs prayer. He is uh, he has the platform, you know, as, as Paul told Timothy, and uh, he said, pray for kings and all of those in authority so that we can live peaceful lives in godliness and holiness. That's kind of paraphrased, but that's my heart um, as it comes. That's, that's the, you know, I would say a biblical response when it comes to talking about politics.